Welcome back to Weird Stuff in a Can. Today's Weird Stuff in a Can is pie. So yeah, we've done Fray Bentos pies in a can before on this channel. I've reviewed the steak and kidney pie on a previous video. I forget which one it was, but it's going to be in this card here if you're on a platform that supports cards. And there'll be a link in the video description. So this is a vegetarian version of their pies. Traditionally, their pies have been steak pies, chicken pies, steak and kidney, mince and onion, that sort of thing. So very beefy, meaty sort of pies. And that's been their mainstay for most of the time this product range has been in existence, which is apparently since 1881. So this is a bit of a departure for them. Cheese and onion pie. Let's have a look at the ingredients. Water, wheat flour, which is wheat flour, wheat gluten, calcium carbonate, iron, niacin, thiamine. Onions, potato, margarine, which is palm oil, rapeseed oil, water, salt, emulsifier, which is mono and diglycerides of fatty acids. Mature cheddar cheese, rapeseed oil, modified maize starch, skim milk powder, maize starch, which is maize starch and ascorbic acid, cheese powder, potato starch, salt, onion powder, flavouring, ground white pepper, garlic powder. I don't know about you, but I find it really difficult when these ingredients have things like wheat flour and then it's brackets, wheat flour, the things that are in wheat flour, and especially here, it's got nested brackets in there. I find it actually quite difficult to follow what things are in what. But I guess the purpose of most of these ingredients is really just to tell you the things you might not want to eat so that you can avoid them. What else have we got on here? Approved by the Vegetarian Society. This is not for vegans, this is for vegetarians. It contains milk and cheese, but no meat. It does contain palm oil, which some people will not like. Palm oil has been in food for a very long time. It used to just be called vegetable oil, but now it has to be identified as palm oil. So, it's not like palm oil has started to be in lots of things. It's kind of always been there, but it's just not been identified. Uh, it is in date 2022. Cheese and onion. Onion, potato and cheddar cheese pie topped with puff pastry. I didn't notice potatoes in there. Oh, they are. Yeah, potatoes are in there after onions. Right, OK. So typical values per half pie, because I think this is intended to be two servings. Uh, 378 calories, 22.5 grams of fat, of which 3 grams of saturates, 33.4 grams of carbohydrates, of which 2.1 grams of sugar, 1.5 grams of fiber, 8.1 grams of protein, 1.3 grams of salt per half pie. That's a moderately high amount of salt, but not so much that I would be worried about it. Uh, what else have we got? Cheese and onion. The only place it actually says pie is here. Everywhere else it just says Frey Bentos cheese and onion, cheese and onion, but it does claim to be a pie. Now, this is a pie in a can, and it's actually just a can of cheese and onion and potato casserole covered with a disc of pastry. So some people will argue that that's not a pie because it has no bottom crust. Other people will say, well, that is a pie, but it's called a pot pie. The term pot pie doesn't really exist in Great Britain. I would say that's a pie because it's got a disc of pastry on top. If you want to argue about that in the comments with each other, feel free, but I'm not probably going to join in. So one other thing to say on here, which I think is really nice. Remove lid using a robust can opener. We highly recommend both the Brabantia Essential line and OXO Good Grips openers. Place open can on a baking tray. Well, I concur with that recommendation. And so I've got my Brabantia can opener right here. And I like the other thing as well is that it even says, even shows you the right way to use a Brabantia can opener there. Because the other thing I get a lot of is people telling me I'm using my can opener wrong. The pie dish is actually shallower than the reach of my can opener. So I'm just going to do that, although it's working anyway. There we go. So that's interesting. There's a chunk of pastry missing and a rather watery looking filling, but never mind. So let's have a sniff. Well, at the moment, it just smells ever so slightly cheesy and I can smell starchy sort of something in there. 
So the instructions were to bake for 25 minutes in the oven. I'm going to go away and do that now, and then we'll come back and see what we've got. So last time when I did the steak and kidney, I cooked it according to the instructions, but that wasn't really long enough and it didn't really crisp up on top. So this time I'm going to cook for the 25 minutes recommended. If it's still a little bit soggy on top, I'm going to keep going so that we end up with a puffy, crispy bit of pastry on top, hopefully. So back in a moment. Okay, so after 25 minutes, that's actually looking pretty good. It's bubbling away there and the pastry is nice and crisp on top. I'm going to let that stand a little bit before I try to eat it. Okay, so here we are. So the pie is cooked. It's still a little bit too hot to touch the dish. The pastry on top has puffed up and gone crispy, but I can feel it's quite soft underneath. There was a manufacturing defect in this. Part of the crust had been pushed down. In fact, I think it was just a bit too much pastry on the thing and it had puckered and gone down inside. But that doesn't seem to have affected the overall result. I do actually think it's quite remarkable that you can have a pie that's cooked inside a can and the pastry on top is actually cooked inside the can and it still puffs up and produces a crust. Anyway, let's open this up and have a look. So yeah, the pastry is actually, it's only really the top layer that's gone completely crispy. And we'll try and serve up half this pie. So there's a close look at the filling. It's a kind of cheesy sauce with chunks of potato in it. So close look at that. Let's have a sniff. So yeah, the cheese and onion flavor is really intense now, and that's as we should hope. Let's just have a little taste of it all together. Bit of pastry. A bit of the filling. I'm going to be careful here so it doesn't drip on my table. Yeah, it's all right. The pastry, let's have a look at the pastry. So the layers underneath are still a bit doughy and soft, but the top is nice and crisp. And it's just cooled down enough to eat now. Now obviously there's no meat in here, it's just potato, cheese and onions, but it's not bad actually. And so with some chips and peas, that would make a nice meal. Yeah, so we can see the pastry underneath is still quite soggy and moist there, but that's actually not bad, it's still edible. In terms of the filling, I think I probably would have liked a few more potatoes in there, probably a, a pie stuffed with chunks of potato just enrobed in a cheese sauce. But, you know, it's made to a budget, this thing. I think it was only about pound 50. So, and most of that would have been the manufacturing process rather than ingredients. It is quite savory, but not too salty. Yeah, it's okay. And I think that's nice enough that I will eat the other half of that off camera in a moment. So yeah, £1.50 for a vegetarian pie, not bad really, and I have no complaints about that. It did spill over a tiny bit during the baking process, I think that's to be expected. So yeah, no massive surprises or shocks in here. This is a cheese and onion pie with pastry on top. Like I say, I'm quite impressed that pastry still works after it's been inside a can. So yeah, that's all right. I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.